Hi, I'm Jay Grunke, founder of the Balanced Runner System. I've been helping runners from beginner to Olympian improve their form and performance since 2003. And I'm here today with another stuck at home running form tip for you from my living room to yours, where you can hear my son Skyping with his friends in the background um, because it's a small place and we're all here. <laughs> so despite the background noise, let's use this time to become as an opportunity to become a better runner. We've got Leroy in the house too here. So a lot of activity around here this morning. We've been talking about how to run downhill and the last two tips um, have focused on uh, things that no one really talks about, <laughs> which is um, the, uh, how to go down rather than up and down with each step and dramatically reduce the pounding that you take and make it easier to run comfortably and fast and safely downhill. And then um, the, the following tip, it's always a little harder for me to concentrate with all the background noise, but I'm gonna do my best. Um, the following tip was uh, the three different ways to go downhill, running, stepping, and braking, and how to choose between them, and how to know when you need to, when it's time to run, when it's time to step, so that you can avoid doing this in-between thing, which is braking. And today, I want to look at arm technique. So the three different techniques that you could employ when with your arms when going downhill. And some of it's gonna be situation dependent, but similarly to the three different, um, uh, the, the running, stepping and braking yesterday, there's, there are two good ones and one bad one <laughs> in, in uh, the arm technique options as well. So uh, let's dive in. So a lot of runners, especially run, when running down um, a trail, especially in a more technical situation, um, put their arms out and use them for balance. And this is uh, related to what people do, you know, if you're walking on a curb or something and you're trying to balance, you may put your arms out to the side. Um, but here's the funny thing about that. Um, that it actually doesn't help as much as you think. Anyway, that is one option for your arms. Uh, option number two is actually to keep your arms in close and move your chest and move your core for balance rather than your arms. And then option number three is that as you're going down, is my proxy for a hill. Um, as you're going down, your arms go up. So if you're taking a big step down, um, you see it's, uh, so it becomes almost kind of a flapping motion like that. Um, so, well, we could call it, we'll call it flapping, but I don't mean that to sound disparaging. So those are your three options. So what's going on with these? Um, as I said, the arms out to the side for balance thing um, is something that we also often do when walking well in a balanced situation. But if you go, <laughs> if you tip too much either way, you then you'll start finding you pinwheel your arms and almost always at that point you fall. Uh, because actually past a certain point, your arms are magnifying your, uh, uh, your weight being off balance. So if you tip just a little, but you do it with your arms out, um, uh, that tipping is magnified. And especially if, if they lose their connection um, so that one moves more separately from the other, you're actually more likely to fall, not less. Um, and so it's not actually that great an option running downhill because it doesn't give you good control over where your feet fall. And what you want is to be able to make rapid and spontaneous and accurate decisions about where you're putting your feet and to be able to adjust as necessary. And this slows you down in responding and adjusting. 
So it's actually, in a situation where you find yourself doing that, it's actually a better idea to pull, in, <laughs> to fold your wings back to uh, uh, this basic hands close to heart, elbows sticking out as much as necessary. Um, uh, organization of your arms that's the right way to use them for distance running in any case and use your spine and your trunk to help you steer I mean obviously you're not holding them here right they're moving um, because you are much more mobile in your spine your ribs your pelvis in terms of being able to shift and place your weight with your arms in close if your arms are out to the side you're, you're, you have less mobility, a lot more of the balancing is done in your arms. With your arms in close, you have much more mobility. It was so much easier to do that with my arms in close. You really should try it. You just put your arms out to the side and just take a, an uneven wobbling sort of, or um, swerving sort of course with your legs and then try it with your arms in close and you'll see that actually you're much more mobile. Um, the adjustments are faster and the load on your trunk muscles is much less, it's less work. And so if you're needing to pick your way down a slope, you're better off with your arms in. Uh, and if it's a road and you don't have to pick your way, you could just run down it, then you're just running and you're better off with your arms in. So this is not going to be productive. And yesterday when I demonstrated um, the breaking, well, actually this is my fourth video on downhill running. I lumped numbers um, two and three together. Pardon me, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> um, uh, when people break, they often lift their chest, fan their ribs apart, extend the leg in front of them, and the elbows and arms will go out as part of that action. That was a huge exaggeration. What? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so again, showing that from the side, that when we break downhill, we tend to put the leg in front, lift the chest, which arches the back and which also, because it is fanning the ribs apart in the sides of the rib cage and in the armpit will tend to cause the arms to go out and then you've got a big breaking force. So you really want to avoid doing that. That's never the technique you want. And keeping your arms, keeping your armpits relaxed, keeping your um, hands close in is gonna help, uh, help you keep from doing that thing so that in fact you can again you can just steer as you need to okay um but there's a third option and sometimes especially on really steep and really stony and potentially really slippery slopes um this um flapping option where as you step down the arms go up what that does is um spread out your landing in time so that it takes longer for your full weight to be on your foot because part of you is going up as part of you is going down. So if you do this, well, let's see, how, I can, how can I demonstrate um, in a way that's gonna come across on video. So there, I just dropped. I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna bring my arms. It was a poor demonstration. Um, but if part of you is going up while part of you is landing, um, then again, it takes until the part that went up to also come down before the full weight is on the foot. And that little fraction of a second that that buys you um, makes you a little less likely to slip because if there is any force going this way, I mean, ideally your weight is far enough forward that you're not gonna slip like that. But if there, if the pebbles would tend to slide, it gives them a moment to grip um, and uh, less likely to slide. 
It also gives you a moment to see, is did I pick a good spot or do I need to adjust my weight a little bit in order not to slip or in order to balance here or whatever it is. Um, and you see um, trail runners use that, use that technique all the time. So in that case, the arms are kind of going up and down as needed. And, and as you can see, the spine is also extending, the chest is also lifting. You wanna do it not in a way that makes you rear back, but you can actually, you can lengthen yourself up and down like that. Like even if I don't straighten my knees, you can see my head going up and down a little bit just from the lengthening that's happening through my spine. So that's a really good technique to have in your toolbox, you know, and it's not, you're going to be responding to the terrain. It's not going to be like a really neat and tidy up and down, up and down. There'll be side shifting and your arms will be going out to some extent, but you're not doing a big, I'm, I know I have it on the tip of my tongue. There's some bird that walks around like this. You're not doing that. Okay. Um, so, uh, so I recommend <laughs> option number one. And when you need an option number two and avoiding option number three. And I see some questions, so I'm going to come in and answer them now. Yeah, so Sam says, all runners spread out arms and accelerating downhill for balance, my experience. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm, uh, I explained to you, the, I mean, some of that, I'm sure, is this thing. Um, you know, but my... my um, The majority of modern runners um, who grew up in the West in soft shoes and sitting a lot and subject to all the things that we do to control and um, stabilize the core, the majority of runners use their arms too much and their cores too little. And so uh, explore your options. Um, because this has worked really well for my clients. Um, ideal crazy, does it affect the balance and movement much if you hold something in your hand, like a cell phone or water bottle? Well, yes. And um, yeah, the whole handheld water bottle thing, um, I think is really very harmful. <laughs> I really wouldn't do it um, because anything you put at the end of a pendulum is going to have a massive effect on the whole system um, and uh, have a knock-on effect um, usually on your opposite leg, but I mean, how your force goes through both legs, um, it really is a bad idea. Um, so anything you've got to carry, put on your torso, don't hold in your hand. And, you know, and partially it's the weight. And then in a water bottle, also the water is sloshing in the bottle. So um, that's changing the, all the dynamics of how that arm moves and that there's a delayed resistance in any direction of movement because of the water sloshing. Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, right, but also um, hands are so important and being able to organize your whole body around what you're doing with your hands that um, when you hold something, you close your hand or when you open your hand, it has an effect on the, the mus muscle tonus, that entire side of your body. And so holding something in addition to the weight and dynamics of the actual thing in your hand has that effect of you're do now doing something with your hand that affects that side of your body. And so for both of those reasons, I would just not do that. Um, uh, Adelino and a camelback. Yeah, I mean, um, a lot of my clients use camelbacks. I think it's a better solution than something in your hand, but it, you know, it has to fit well and also not slosh around or not bounce around on your back. So, I mean, um, I don't use any of these things um, uh, because I don't run as much as most of my clients. Um, uh, so I can't recommend from personal experience, but I know that, um, you know, the devil's in the details and different people like different brands, but you definitely want something that fits close, that's going to move with you, that's not going to restrict your movement. And so a camelback could be good or bad in that regard. 
Um, Sam, got it. Yes, there's a difference between runners and yes, on bottles, but with limited water points, got to hydrate. Yes, absolutely. But, um, you know, again, rather than a handheld bottle, um, you know, I know the, the um, hydration belts maybe don't carry all that much water, though it is nice that it's spread out. But um, I think especially if you need to carry a fair amount of water, a camelback is probably your best choice in that case. Um, yeah, for a, a 50K for sure. Um, you need to you need something like a camelback. Okay, so um, that seems to cover the questions. Uh, hopefully this is helpful and is going to get you thinking and experimenting. And, and you know, you really want to um, fine tune your technique through a lot of experimentation with this. So first just try the like balance exercise that I recommended um, with your arms out versus keeping them closer in and using your core to balance. You can make finer adjustments and I think you'll find your balance is better. Um, and then take that experience with you into your next mildly challenging hill and just explore how your balance is arms closer in versus farther out. And then when do you want to use this technique? Um, am I, uh, at, <laughs> Sam wants to know, um, are you planning a shoe session? Oh, shoes is a huge topic, but thank you for the suggestion. You know, it depends on how long this lockdown goes on. I'm in California. We know now that we're here for another month um, through May. So um, I'll be here through May and I'm going to be doing more and more Q&As, I think. Um, I want to talk about breathing for sure. And that can be a whole week I, without doubt. Um, yeah, we can talk about shoes. We can talk about shoes. Thanks for the suggestion. Um, anybody else got a suggestion for me? Leave it in the comments. Uh, I much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, have a great weekend. It's Friday. So I'm now going to rest and recover for two days and jump back in here with you on Monday. Uh, if you liked this video, if you found it useful, please hit like so that YouTube knows to share it with other runners who need this information. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click the little bell um, next to the subscribe button so that you'll get notifications when I release new videos. Uh, please check out all the great resources I have for you on balancedrunner.com. I'm going to put a resource in the description. I always put a resource in the description. I'm going to put, uh, again, perfecting your foot strike. I, it's the same one that I put in yesterday. And it's not for your foot strike, but it's a side bending lesson. So especially for your pelvis, your spine, and your ribs, it will help you feel how to make these adjustments um, in your core, you know, proximally, um, where small adjustments do the job that big adjustments out here would need to do with less control. So it's after you do that lesson, it's going to be easier to do that kind of experimentation. Um, uh, I've got some other great suggestions over here. Sam, yes, warm up and cool down. Um, in France, you go to 11 May. Yes, Germany too, I've heard. So enjoy your, um, uh, enjoy your increase in freedom. <laughs> And think of us here in the Bay Area of California. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'll see you again on Monday. Bye-bye.